Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Association Leadership Radio. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Association Leadership Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Holly Duckworth with the American Mindfulness Association. Welcome, Holly. Hi, Lee. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to learn more about your work. Tell us a little bit about the American Mindfulness Association. How are you serving folks? Well, Lee, it's such a great question, and some people might out there in, in association land recognize my name from my years as a keynote speaker trainer and an author in the association space. Uh, during the pandemic, like so many of us, we expanded our work in the world, and so I took my passion for mindfulness and leadership and my background as a CAE, blended those together to create the American Mindfulness Association and the vision and mission of our organization is really to address the ethics ethics and the credentialing and the advocacy work that the mindfulness industry needs right now. I'm sure you've heard this word mindfulness, Lee, but uh, what is that and what does it mean? And you know, just like the American Dental Association or the Exercise Association um, needed to come together to advance their professionalism, I'm shepherding that initiative in the mindfulness space. So what uh, kind of spurred you in this direction? What got you excited about mindfulness and, and, you know, kind of help put together an organization that serves it? Well, I've been teaching mindfulness and leadership for, gosh, almost 15 years now. And I kept getting that little that little knock on the door that it was it was time to to expand that into creating this association. And, you know, finally, during the pandemic, right, we, we had everything to do and nothing to do all at the same time. Um, I sat down to the bylaws, the policies, the procedures, all the, you know, the 501c pa- paperwork. And it really is that that merging of my my background in association leadership filled with this idea of mindfulness. And for those of you uh, listeners who may have heard of it or seen mindfulness on a, on a magazine, the work that I do is the neuroscience and secular practice of mindfulness. So our association uh, connects all of the corporations that are doing mindfulness. Maybe you have a mindfulness app on your on your phone. Um, all of the mindfulness training education and universities out there that are doing such great research. And then connects the practitioners. There's a, an entire group of people that are out there teaching people mindfulness. And so I'm looking to really bring all those folks together and say, what are the key things we need for credentialing? What are the key needs we need? things for the ethics of the organization? And then how can we advocate for this work um, in Washington, D.C.? And certainly, although the association is the American Mindfulness Association, we're certainly open to, to branching out um, and serving leaders that are advancing this practice around the world. Now, mindfulness, like you said, has been um, kind of used in conversation for a long time. How is mindfulness doing when it comes to kind of research that backs up kind of the value of mindfulness. Has that uh, come as far as you'd like it to have gone? You know, Lee, it's an absolutely fantastic question. And because I have been studying this work for so long, it's interesting. And when I first started 10 or 15 years ago, there was really only maybe 50 or 100 research papers out there. Now there's 50 or 100 research papers coming out on a regular basis. So there's literally thousands of research studies around the world. In fact, we have a complementary organization to us called the American Mindfulness Research Association that specifically catalogs all of that information uh, from around the world. And so, we just need an organization that's continuing to speak about this topic from that neuroscience secular research uh, background, people like Amishi Ja out of the University of Miami, or perhaps Judson Brewer. Uh, There's a lot of research out there, but because this work kind of came to us um, from a spiritual point of view, people are often biased toward that. And so the more an association like ours continues to speak to the neuroscience, the more acceptable this practice is in workplaces around the world. So now, how is it kind of um, entering the workforce? In what ways are you seeing mindfulness 
kind of be legitimatized as a way uh, that people can utilize through corporate wellness programs? Well, again, another great, great question. And that, and that's one of those uh, things that our association is working on is there's really kind of two individual paths. Uh, the main path, of course, it can come through might be through human resources, uh, leadership development, and that generally has a one to one focus. So it's, it's teaching mindfulness that way. My company that many of you maybe have met me through Leadership Solutions International also focuses on the other arm, which is that workplace mindfulness. And that's that collective mindfulness. How do we use visioning, um, stress reduction techniques, focus and attention techniques that are found in mindfulness to create greater productivity in our groups, in our teams and our executive um, organization. So it, it can come into an organization in either one of those ways. But the most important thing for any workplace is that it comes in, again, from that neuroscience and secular point of view. Um, while some people may enter it from um, a spiritual point of view, that's not appropriate for the workplace. And that's kind of, is that a hard distinction for your organization, the secular part? It has been an interesting um, intersection because just like any organization, whether you're the Automobile Dealers Association or uh, if you're, you know, representing, you know, a Chamber of Commerce, you know, there's always the those those old school uh, thought processes that that are rich and have maybe brought your organization or your industry to one point of view, and then there's this new plateau of learning that we can create, and so leaning toward that secular piece sometimes is a little uncomfortable for those people who did uh, come to mindfulness uh, from a, a religious point of view. And there's no right or wrong here, but as an association, we are strictly dedicated to uh, mindfulness really as it relates to the workplace. So we, we do utilize that as a, as a guidepost for our members. So now you started this from scratch. There, there was no association that you built this upon it was like a blank page yeah it was <laughs> uh, i mean every everything is is an idea you know an idea coming into form so of course you know there there's a community you know just like in your in your organization you probably had five or six different people doing similar work i brought it all together and brought all those volunteers together and then of course did all the legal paperwork to actually found the association so yeah it is it is a bit of a blank canvas so uh, can you share some advice for other people who are thinking about maybe, um, you know, going this route of starting their own association or an association to fill a need that they feel needs to be filled? What were some of the things you learned and maybe you can share that maybe were, you know, kind of the, the good and the bad of this, that maybe some things work great and some things were like, hey, if I could, had to do that again, I probably wouldn't have done this. Well, every day I'm learning those those experiences, Lee, and I think that any any great association leader listening to the show knows that whether your association's been founded for 35 years or, or three months or, or three years, but uh, we really try to infuse again this live this principle of mindfulness. So the most commonly accepted definition of mindfulness is mindfulness is the practice of being present in the moment without judgment. So. Working with that through the founding of this organization has really invited us to a couple key things that I think leaders want to really consider. And, and first is, you know, that idea of uh, listening, that I'm finding myself in this role asking and listening more questions and almost listening for the moment, the, the moment of silence in between, you know, mindfulness, be, be fully present. Take the time to be fully present with those people who you think are your key stakeholders, maybe those people who are the opposite of stakeholders, some of those naysayers, um, that I've learned a lot about the past, the present, and hopefully the future of where this association can go by listening and asking questions. So that would be my first key takeaway for anybody looking at starting an initiative like this. Um, second, of course, is, of course, all the documentation and, and legal support. 
you've got a lot of great resources here, Lee, on your show and certainly in the association community, but making sure that you, you know, you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. That was a, a, a great process for me. I've had a lot of those resources and tapped into them uh, in terms of creating this association. So that's kind of two, two tips that I think now is a good time, whether you're founding a new idea or even, you know, a lot of us are re-emerging in this post-pandemic, having to kind of rebuild on some level from scratch that, you know, check, check that documentation, make sure that it's right up to date. And then, uh, you know, ask, ask your stakeholders and listen to what they have to say. Now, um, when you were starting out, how did you kind of build the community or, around yourself? How did you know who the key uh, stakeholders would be and who you needed in order to, you know, make this uh, come alive? Fantastic question. Um, I had been watching in the background for a long time as a mindfulness practitioner. So I had been tracking what were the big organizations that already had events, who were the leaders. Obviously, I had read an entire library of books. And then I also had a podcast by the by the, by the name Everyday Mindfulness Show, and I'd written four books on the topic. So that that research time. And then, you know, I did a lot of informational interviews. So I built that community then, you know, from getting the big pool of, okay, I think these are all the potential people. And then, you know, I, I picked five or 10 and I just, I, you know, I asked them, do you want to be on this committee? Do you want to, you know, be on the bylaws? Do you want to be on the board? Um, so that, that courage to stand out there and ask, and it's quite fun now that all that, that sometimes that paperwork stuff is less fun for people. Uh, now that it's really coming to life, it's fun to see who's also showing up. You know, then I ask those people, who do you know? And who do you know? And who do you know? Um, and I learned this tip too from another association executive when I was first getting started. She said, you know, why don't you take the 50 state model? Go find one person that can represent mindfulness in the workplace in, in all of the 50 states. So I'm currently curating that list as well. I think that's a, a great place to, you know, you don't have to get overwhelmed. Oh, I need 50,000 people, but you know, I need one. And then that one grows and grows and grows. So um, geography can play a big role as well as your own Rolodex. So how did you, uh, that's fascinating to me, that 50 state uh, plan. So how did you attack a state like where you didn't personally know anybody? Did you just go to your LinkedIn or, I mean, you have a lot of experience obviously as a speaker, so your network's probably vast and you probably know somebody almost in every 50 states, but how did you kind of attack a state where you didn't know a lot of folks? I'm still growing through that one, Lee. Um, that uh, That's a great question. And I think that's uh, where, especially a topic like mindfulness, sometimes there are there's geographic bents to it that, you know, people often think West Coast USA people are more, more mindful than perhaps East Coast. Um, I haven't found that to be true, but leaning into that curiosity and discovery piece, I don't have every 50, all 50 states covered yet. But it's a great goal, I think, to have. And in those cases where I don't have somebody right now, um, I'm kind of letting it be because maybe, maybe I don't have to have all fifty. But we'll we'll see how how it goes. So when you got, how did you? Okay, let's talk about then the first people that you approached about this and said, "Hey, you know, I'm coming to Illinois and I'm looking for somebody." Uh, do you know somebody or is it you? Like, how did you kind of frame those conversations to get people excited and want to take on the mission? Uh, engagement and, 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 you know, we always talk in associations, right? ROI re and return on investment, return on engagement. Um, our board did make the decision that for those first people in each state that opt, in to, to be an active volunteer for the association. We're going to give them a discount on their membership that year. We're going to invite them to make some calls and invite them to cross connect amongst the states. So each quarter we'll just, you know, have a state, you know, leader, not a convention, not a meeting, not a big thing. You know, so often in associations we get stuck in, in that whole realm. But we're going to have a we're going to have a Zoom call or from, and just start growing organically from that place. And um, having read so many organizations leading up to the founding of this one, I know that there's a magic when we start to bring people together. And I think that will fill in some of the gaps. You know, if it, we'll use your Illinois example, you know, you're on an Illinois call, suddenly you have, you know, five or six states represented, and then it comes up, hey, we're still looking for somebody in Florida, for example, and, and that person will come up. And then, of course, um, with the partnerships with our, with our members. So what has been the most rewarding part of the journey thus far? 
Wow. Um, you know, sometimes you get your nose down in the weeds and you're just working on it. You, you kind of forget those moments. You know, Lee, I think it, it is those moments when I when I say to somebody, you know, I'm, I'm founding this organization and they say back to me, oh, my God, I'm getting chills about the possibility. I, I had one member talk about, you remember, you know, X, the X of fitness movement or the exercise movement when it was, you know, leggings and Birkenstocks and, you know, people, it didn't have the, the structure and the safety and the ethics and some of the credentialing that it has now. They they saw the journey that industry went to, to become, you know, the trillions of dollars industry that it is today. And that same vibrancy is possible for the Mindfulness Association when we bring in the technology and the human skills, as well as um, all of the research. So that that's exciting to me when people catch my vision and then start to, to mold it to their own. Now, what is uh, an activity that you that maybe we can be helping you with that at the end of the week or the end of the month that you and your team will be high-fiving? What's something that uh, you need to be done that you might need the help of others? Wow. Um, right now, Lee, I'm honestly in the, in that fundraising mode. So if you have or know anyone in, in those, the C-suites of, of organizations that um, are looking for sustainable sustainability organizations to support, um, see value in getting their logo, their funding, and become a part of this conversation on that founding sponsor type level. Um, those, are the, those are the big rocks we're trying to remove right now and, and celebrate along the way. So if somebody wants to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, is the website up and running? Yeah, um, Holly at American Mindfulness ASSN shortened and then dot org american mindfulness assn.org holly at american mindfulness assn.org i'd love to to brainstorm with people what they see because it is this collective good that's growing the, the seeds of an idea that was planted during the pandemic well congratulations on all the success and congratulations on all the momentum you're doing important work and we appreciate you Thank you, Lee. I look forward to uh, hearing from all the listeners and hopefully seeing your, seeing you at an association community event in the future. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Holly, for sharing your story. My pleasure. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Association Leadership Radio.